Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It gives me a great honor and a pleasure to be here with you beautiful people. My name is Larry Yazi, and I'm the artistic director for the Native Pride Dancers. Our mission is to inspire, motivate, and educate through music and dance. That's been passed on to us by our elders. At a very young age, I started dancing about seven years old. And today, I stand in front of you tall and proud of what I've accomplished and the people that I've met throughout my travels. And we just recently returned from North Carolina and we're swinging through Iowa and we're on our way to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And for us to be here in this beautiful state of Iowa, you see, I come from Tama, Iowa. I am a proud member of the Meskwaki Nation of Central Iowa. And for many years, we, we hold the powwow every second weekend in August. We invite you to come to our homeland. We invite you to come check out our arts and crafts, our food, our beautiful dances, our sacred songs we share with you. And this is something I want to share with you at this time as I bring out the rest of the dancers here in our wonderful program, Dancing Through Life. Every dance has a meaning. Every song has a prayer. And I would say thank you. So give yourselves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad you guys are here this evening. And I'm glad that you guys want to be here and to dance with us. So thank you very much. Ahu. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful dance here. This dance that I just completed here, ladies and gentlemen, that I demonstrated here, the beautiful, the beautiful eagle. They say that the eagle flies the highest of all birds. It carries our prayers, carries our dreams to the creator that we call Gitche Manitou. And our, and our dancers here, you know, they come from many different places, from northern part of Minnesota, Wisconsin. Our dancer here, our male dancer, our traditional dancer, all the way from Sweetgrass, Saskatchewan, Canada. Give yourselves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Josh Atchinen. <laughs> Josh is a beautiful storyteller as well, a dancer as well. And I want to dedicate this dance to all of our veterans. Let's give our veterans a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. This dance is for you. Uh -huh. All right. Before we get into this next uh, dance, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, certain questions we get asked all the time, being Native American people. And one of the most predominant questions we always get asked is, um, are you guys still fighting any wars? Do you guys live in teepees, right? You know, simple things like that, but the, the answers are like, yes, we're fighting wars every single day as Native American people. And the one right now that we're fighting, if you guys haven't heard about it, it's against the Dakota Access Pipeline. And there's um, families down there, children, mothers that are getting pepper sprayed by the cops getting shot with tasers, protecting water. That's the most important element in this world that we cannot live without is something like water. And our children are on the front line fighting for it, along with their parents. And something like that is uh, very touching for us, so that's when we dance and do all our shows. Ever since then, we dedicate all of our shows to the front line problem. protectors. People call them protesters, but they're not protesting, they're protecting our Mother Earth because she doesn't have a voice. And us Native American people are the most in tune with Mother Nature, so we're able to speak to her, speak to the animals and to all the other beings on this earth, and they relay these messages to us. The first style of dance that you saw was the eagle dance. Like Larry said, the eagle flies high and carries those prayers. So the prayers that we have here tonight are being brought up to the Creator. The second style of dance we want to show you guys is called the woman's jingle dress dance. And the woman's jingle dress dance comes from the Ojibwe people, the Anishinaabe people from northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and parts of Ontario, Canada. It was said that a little girl was very ill and she couldn't walk no more. Her grandfather had a dream. Just like that, it started raining. And during that night when he had that dream, he dreamt of a dress that made that sound of this rain. 
The next day, the grandmothers helped him put together that dress. They put it on that little girl. Slowly, she was able to start moving, start walking. And something like that carries those prayers. And the woman I'm bringing out to you is from the Lakota Ray Ojibwe Nation of Northern Wisconsin. Her name is Sheena Kane. And she's gonna to demonstrate to you guys the beautiful woman's jingle dress dance. As you see, the sound of it sounds like that rain because rain brings healing. Water is good energy. Just like I told you about the pipeline. That's what she's gonna dance for. She's gonna dance for that healing and those good energies, those good vibes that we all need as human beings to be able to live amongst each other in perfect harmony with nature. So with that, I just want to put your hands together one time for Sheena Kane here. Amongst my people, 
There's five generations of my family that all wore these buffalo headdresses that have been passed down, passed down. And we had to earn the right to wear these. Before these, we wouldn't have anything on our heads. We just have a couple of feathers in our hair. But we had to earn these through ceremony and everything that you see on our outfit is all handmade. Everything is real, authentic. All the feathers are real eagle feathers, top to bottom. Everything that we have on is, like I said, we all have a story for it. In the men's traditional, we were to um, tell our stories of wars, tell our stories of successful hunts, battles that we may have had. So that's what I'm going to do here for you guys. I'm going to share with you guys um, a story of one of the most popular wars amongst Native American people, which happened in 1876 when Tatanka Iota K. Sitting Bull defeated General Custer. And I like to tell this story because the style of dance that I do is a warrior's dance and Sitting Bull was one of the greatest Native American warriors of all time. So I honor him through my dance, through my lineage and my family. We also honor by doing the proper dance. Normally you'd see a straight dance, like you saw Sheena dance a sidestep, you'll see a straight dance just one, two, one, two, right? But the style of dance that is appropriate for the men's traditional to tell the story of the little bighorn would be the sneak up because the sneak up is when we were on our knees trying to attack our enemies and then when the sneak up part would come on we would be down there trying to duck them out because there'd be bullets flying over us and there would be three of those stops and every one of those stops would be pushing forward pushing forward until the very end when we finally pushed forward and we defeated him we defeated General Custer that way and now um, I just want to thank you guys for allowing me to come in all the way from Canada to come down here in the middle of Iowa to demonstrate my, my style of dance, which is um, the men's traditional. I've been doing this for 25 years and I'm probably not going to stop anytime soon, but I hope you guys enjoy the story of uh, the Battle of the Little Bighorn. <laughs>
they did. It was the greatest evening victory of the Plains Wars. 